with Los Monteros and Pampa, and Pampa de las Salinas, early monumentality, environmental transformations, and the creation of a pre-ceramic ceremonial landscape. Good morning. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the Institute for Funding Studies for this opportunity. I am very glad I can share the current status of my research with all of you. And um, I'm going to make a very tight uh, summary of my work because there, there is a lot to say. Uh, and I might take uh, more than 20 minutes. I, I apologize for that in advance. <laughs> Sorry. So, um, well, let's start. I work in the Chao Valley, which is between um, the Santa Valley and the Viru Valley. And um, the Chao Valley is a, a small valley, a narrow valley, um, that is formed by the Choloval and Guamansanya rivers. And uh, it's been historically um, described as a rather arid valley and uh, with uh, always deficit of water. Most of the uh, agriculture in, in historic times have been done in the, in the lower part, in the middle part, uh, through um, um, pukios and artificial wells. And also this valley, uh, for some reasons, I don't, I don't know, I don't understand, um, um, didn't get much attention from archaeologists. So uh, there, there, are, there were some projects, but not many yet, still, until, until this, this year. But in 1977, the project uh, Obtención de una Cronología del Uso de Recursos Marinos en el Antiguo Perú by the people from the Seminary of Arqueología de la Universidad Católica uh, um, did an exploration of, of this valley, mostly in the, in the lower part and in the middle part. And they recorded um, more than 30, uh, sorry, more than 50 archeological sites in, in, in the Chao Valley, and that was the bait for future studies in this, in this area. So excavations and exploration were led by Mercedes Cardenas and, and her team. Their names are, are right, uh, right there. My work so far focuses on this part of the Lower Chao Valley, which is called uh, Pampa de las Salinas. And it's, uh, this is a satellite photo of this area. It's a very particular area. It's, uh, it has a uh, paleo embayment uh, um, and a pampa area, a relatively flat area, surrounded by some Andean foothills. And you see on yellow is the, um, a uh, paleo shoreline. The Chao River is, uh, from the Pampa area, is uh, about eight kilometers, and that Pampa area is um, four kilometers from the ocean. This is how it looks now. This is a view uh, of the dry environment from east to west. It's a very dry, currently it's a very dry environment, very saline. The, most of the, uh, the, uh, the environment is filled with dune fields. And the pampa looks like this. No vegetation, no water, no fresh water on the surface, and nothing but chicken farms. And, um, but despite this, uh, this current environment, uh, Mercedes Cardenas and her team recorded more than 20 archaeological sites in this area, most of which were ceramic. The most, uh, uh, the best known site in, in Andean literature uh, in this, uh, of the Chao Valley is perhaps this site, Salinas de Chao. And this is a photo, a photo I took in last July. But also there are other sites here like Pescadores with a stone architecture, some open um, areas, but also small rooms uh, and tents of windbreaks. There are shell middens too, like this one, recorded also by Mercedes Cardenas, Conchal Viejo. And those are uh, the calibrated dates. In 2012, I started this, uh, my research in this area as a part of my uh, dissertation project for my doctoral dissertation. And I, I, I um, kept coming back to this area since then. So my research. Um, focused in the beginning in this uh, site, Los Morteros. 
The name of this site is, is because of some stone mortars that Cardenas and her team uh, found on the surface of, of, of this mound. It's a mound-shaped archaeological site. It's about uh, 200 by 200 meters and, and 1,500 uh, meters high. Cardenas uh, excavated some test pits on top, mostly on top of the mound, and she found some human burials and some uh, refuses that she described as domestic. And uh, later, in 2010, a crew from the University of Maine did some uh, GPR exploration of the mountains, and, and they, they found some evidence of architecture of large dimensions, probably uh, something monumental, underneath uh, thick uh, layers of aeolian sand. So in the beginning, uh, the, the, the question was to, um, some of the questions of my project were focused on uns uh, understanding the formation process of this, this, this site, what was mortados, there was a, if there was a, a monumental architecture, and what was the relation between uh, mortados and Salinas de Chao, which uh, at, the, at that moment was the earliest example of monumental architecture in the Chao Valley. So, um, until uh, 2013, I got three uh, occupational phases for, for, for the mount. Uh, we explored uh, different areas of the mount. This is an area photo of the mount, and I found these faces in different parts, exploring different areas of, of, of the site. So um, the, the last uh, phase of occupation, the last uh, phase of construction, was recorded originally on top of the mount, and is uh, related to our, uh, stone architecture with brown corners, um, stone platforms, and uh, these standing stones. And, um, but I found also remains of the same kind of architecture in different, different sectors uh, of the mound. And this is a very superficial occupation. You have to dig only a few centimeters uh, from the surface to find these, these walls. And also, uh, it has the, this architecture has these very thick uh, clay floors. The second phase of occupation is related to monumental adobe architecture found on the north part of the mound and um, uh, formed by these uh, rooms that are 10 by 7 meters with adobe walls and um, thick, um, also thick uh, clay floors. Some of the some of the walls uh, had uh, up to two meter height, and this was stratigraphically found. Uh, this architecture um, under the uh, the stone architecture, and this 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 picture shows that. And um, in in a recent excavation of this architecture, this adobe architecture, last January we found a very interesting context, uh, a uh, an offering to the to the uh, related to the uh, closing event of the adobe architecture, and we were excavating the the, uh, the, the central part of, of one of these adobe rooms, and we found an offering formed by. Um, um, sea lion bones, some fish bones, but the most interesting part was this. We found uh, human bodies, um, like this, children, and one very particular uh, finding, this is the body of a child that was completely burnt, and uh, intentionally burnt. And there were also many uh, human bones that were found like, um, that seemed to be isolated, uh, no articulated bones. And uh, we just finished the study of this context and we found um, uh, at least 10 bodies of children, then all of them, almost all of them so far, the analysis said that um, were between three and uh, five years old. And there are evidence of two adult individuals, but uh, some uh, some part of adult individuals. And uh, there is a very clear intention of selecting the individuals that were buried here in this in this context. Uh, and as far as I know, this is the uh, all this evidence I I, I could find um, about the burning of a body. I know about other cases, similar cases, but later in time. But this is very intentional. It was a, a 
there were there were some other remains, some other uh, remains that were part of this offering that were burned, but not all of them. It was very clear the uh, the intention of burying these these bodies were, was very clear. And to see um, this this context uh, in, a, in a profile view. Uh, <laughs> This is the interior of, of the adobe room where we find the uh, where we found this this offering, and in the lower level are the, the, the human remains and some animal bones. And then this was part of the closing event because um, the the adobe walls were dismantled, uh, actually destroyed. There were pieces of adobe, but all these pieces of the adobe walls were inside the, the room, not outside. And it was a very clear intention of dismantle the walls. And on top of that, there was there, there was a onion sand deposit with chormitilus, only chormitilus shells. So, um, to talk about the the, um, the whole area, since the beginning, uh, I I understood that uh, I I couldn't um, study Mortero without taking into account the whole context. There were more than 20 archaeological sites around Morteros, and, and previous research indicated that some of them could be uh, contemporary with Morteros. So I needed to understand the other the other sites too. So I focused my excavations on Morteros, but I also um, do some excavations to uh, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> Uh, build the chronology of the area because uh, Carmes and her team they they obtained some chrono some dates, but there was uh, some controversy about these dates. So I, I decided to build my <coughs> sorry my own chronology. So I started um, digging other sites along with morteros, and um, the, so far the ceremonial and monumental architecture um, is just evident in Morteros and also Salinas de Chao, but also there are some areas of uh, ceremonial activities like these geoglyphs. Some of the geoglyphs areas were recorded by Cardenas and her team in the late 70s, but um, we found um, two more areas of these, uh, these uh, architect uh, archaeological features. These are very particular um, geoglyphs, and this is the one recorded by Cardenas. It's close to very close to Morteros. It's called the, the Sable Cross or Cross del Sur, and it's formed by these uh, circular marks uh, made with uh, stones. Uh, but the, the particular things that it mark are inside very large rooms that, that are about 50 and 100 meters long. So forming that, this is very, this is uh, very similar to the constellation. Actually, but there are more than there are five, five of these uh, five similar areas. So this is geography four. This you have the same thing: walls and marks. And if you see <coughs> these circular marks, you you see some of them appear to be bigger or larger than others. And this is completely intentional. This is not a preservation thing. It's completely intentional. They decided to build some of these circle, circles bigger than others. And this is how they look from the ground, so circular accumulation of, of rocks inside these structures. And some of these structures have uh, even uh, entrance preserved. Other features in this area are uh, pre-ceramic trails. And this one is late, later, I think, from the pre-ceramic occupation. We even found some uh, colonial losa and some coins. And there are walls that uh, seem to have a uh, function to close the, the main area where most of the sites were, were located in Pampa de Salinas. This is a wall that is uh, close to uh, Salinas de Chao site. And uh, it's been eroded by, um, by uh, water, by runoff in, in here. You can see the wall. So if you see the whole area, uh, you have archaeological sites, the uh, geoglyphs, and the walls. The, there is another wall, the south part. This is a uh, in the south. The south wall is uh, closing a um, natural path between the, these these small hills, and it's a it's a path from uh, that connects the, this part of the Chao Valley with the Santa Valley that is just north of this. And this is a the late uh, trail, the late road. Uh, in the beginning, I thought there was some of these uh, sites in this area could be domestic. 
because of the size of the architecture, the size of the characteristic, and some reports from, from Cárdenas. But I haven't found any evidence of domestic occupation or like the evidence of a population living in that, in that area yet. This is the site of Piedras Negras, and we excavated this because Cardinals uh, reported this site as a, as a domestic site. But we found architecture that doesn't seem to be very domestic. Big walls, thick, uh, um, thick uh, clay floors, and I don't think this is a very domestic uh, site. And so still there is no, um, I haven't found yet the uh, where the population that occupy Morteros and these other sites uh, were staying probably in other, in other parts of the valley. Sorry. Um, and this is another detail, and these are the new dates from, from uh, the, this site. Cardenas reported this site as being, being contemporary with Mortero, but there is, there is no relationship uh, so far. So um, another component of my research was to understand the environment, because as I, as I uh, mentioned before, the current environment doesn't have many relationships uh, with all these archaeological sites. It's a very, it's not a very friendly environment. Um, and why people um, was here? So, in order to understand that question, I I, uh, I did some environmental analysis of the area, try to understand how how uh, what transformation this this area went through. So I, uh, we started analyzing the stratigraphy of the dry environment. So we did some exploration of the stratigraphy through test pits. And these marks are test pits that uh, we open in, the, in this dry environment. So pits like this until reaching the groundwater. Um, the groundwater is between, um, it's less than a meter mostly in, in, in most of the areas. So we analyze the stratigraphy to understand, try to understand what the, what environment formed this deposit. So to summarize, we found this evidence of deposit that could be un, uh, uh, interpreted as wetlands close to the Peña shoreline and followed by to the, to going to the ocean by deposit, Laguna deposits, and then open beach deposits and then the mother beach. <clears throat> this could be understood, if they can, can be, could be like this. Like this is the area in the, in the north of Chico, the albufera de Medio Mundo, and uh, Morteros, uh, Pampa y Las Salinas could be like this, uh, although larger, with a lagoon and some wetlands around. But we were uh, missing something, and, and that's the hardest part of this environmental, environmental reconstruction, is the chronology, because we know that these environments were there, but we uh, didn't know when, and when this transformation happened. So uh, our explorations in 2012 found three new uh, shell middens, all of them mesodesmas, uh, machas, shell middens, and these were the memejo, nodos, and three, <laughs> Sorry, um, on the on the north part of the dry embayment. So we decided to excavate them because there were there was some evidence of that these shell millions were cultural. So this is Memejo too, and uh, we excavated this last January January 2017, and we found this um, cultural evidence, hard stone heart with uh, charcoal and shells, matches inside. So we dated them. And uh, this date uh, helped to uh, have a like the maximum date for ocean recession. Um, and also, we use morteros. This is a, a, another view from of morteros, the mount. And if you see part of the mount is inside the, the dry embayment. In the beginning, we thought that uh, this was like a collapse because of the time, and because of that, some part of the mount was inside. But we found, we explored that area, and we found ar um, architecture that is very similar uh, than the, the surface of occupation, the, the stone architecture, and it's, and it's dated uh, to 5,000 years BP. So um, what we have so far is this. Um, the ocean wasn't there. Um, between, I mean, the, the um, period, the, this embayment wasn't active uh, around 5,000 years ago because uh, Mortero was there, 
the ocean wasn't in the middle part of the of the embayment around that that uh, 2700 BP because of the shell middens, and um, probably this wasn't an active embayment. It's, I mean, the, the population that occupied this area didn't, I'm sorry, didn't see an active embayment when they when they arrived. So and um, and. Um, but it's, it's very it's, it's um, likely that uh, the the wetlands and the lagoon were there around that that, that time. That's what the the geoarchaeologists tell us. So far, the whole occupation of the area, with the dates that I have um, until now, indicated occupation of the area from 6,000 to 3,000 BP. And these seem to be related to uh, some um, um, regional um, changes in the in the behavior of El Nino. And uh, um, but this this is I, I can talk about this in another time. But it is there is some relationship with that. And Mortero was the, the the oldest site in the area. Apparently, it has the oldest evidence of. Uh, uh, monumental architecture and some ceremonial activities so far. And we recently found some evidence of cultural uh, deposits uh, that are pre-architecture, pre-monumental pre -monumental phases. So probably Morteros is going to be very old, at least, but older than 6,000 for sure. And uh, this is very interesting because we have a very long occupation of the site and we can understand this, this construction of monumental uh, ar architecture there because there was a long history of occupation. It wasn't, it, it didn't happen like, you know, from nothing. So, um, and this is another, this is another uh, view of this deposit. We haven't dated this deposit yet, but uh, that's, that's for future, um, for future research. There is a gap between Mortelos. Mortelos is, the, the, as I said, the, the oldest side with this um, ceremonial architecture, um, monumental architecture, but the occupation ended around 5,000 years BP. And then the oldest date for, for the other monumental site in the area is 4,000. There is a gap of uh, 1,000 years. And I think the, the answer is there, is, is here in, in Salinas de Chao. Salinas de Chao is, um, is uh, it was excavated or it was. Um, little excavated, so um, hopefully um, this year we are going to um, start new excavations at this site. And something that I, for I forgot to tell, sorry, is that uh, um, the characteristic of the, the uh, architecture here indicates that uh, some monumental uh, architecture in these ceremonial spaces that, uh, were, that repeated in some part of the mount, similar and other rooms in different parts of the mount, mostly on the north side. And also the uh, stone architecture is very similar. I mean, it was like the same kind of architecture on the top, on the east side, on the west side, on the north side, indicating that the uh, same kind of activities, maybe um, um, related with some families or small groups. But what you see here is a change. It's a very interesting change. It's a more centralized. Uh, it's a more it, the activities, ceremonial activities are more centralized. You have more, also a, a, um, a spaces built for larger audience. I don't know if there were larger audience, but they they built that. So that's a very interesting change. And also, um, sorry. Um, so far, Salinas de Chao belongs to the uh, second phase of occupation of, of Pampa de las Salinas. And some other sites that we have dated, the sites that have this uh, larger architecture belong to this, this part, the, this second phase, from 4,000 to 3,000 BP. And uh, that, that's, that's, um, that's also very interesting to understand um, how, how population, how the activities change. So around 3,000 BP, this, this site was abandoned. The whole area was abandoned. Uh, again, this coincides with uh, some changes with the Nino activities and more uh, fine sediment coming to this, to this area. So uh, the ocean 
uh, there wasn't like a real visitation of the ocean, but more than an infilling of the embayment with fine sediment from, from, from coming from the air and the ocean. And so around 3,000 BP, there was no uh, wetlands, there, there was no lagoon, and uh, that was the end of the occupation. But also this abandonment, this change in the occupation of, of Pampela Salinas could be related to other sites in the Chao Valley, maybe sites like this one. The Cerro Cabra, uh, also reported, uh, reported by Cardenas um, and her team. This is in the middle Chao Valley, one of the components of the Chao River. And this is an uh, interesting site because it's composed by a series of uh, small mounds with sunken circular plazas. That, that can be another site that arises uh, at, uh, at the end of the uh, at the, around the end of the, the Pampa y Las Salinas activity. And also this, this I hope in the future, uh, in the near future, we are going to uh, come to this site and, and do some excavation to take some, uh, to obtain some uh, data. So, um, what, what uh, to finish, what we see here is uh, a very interesting history of the of this valley, uh, very ancient history of this valley, and and monumental architecture, ceremonial architecture that has a long history in this area. Although Salinas de Chao can have some uh, characteristic very uh, similar than the Norte Chico, the presence of this site is understood because of morteros and because of all these people living in this area for a long time. So it wasn't just just uh, influence from, from other areas that you know uh, got this decides to be built. Well thank you very much. Can I ask a quick question? Uh, the rectangular adobes that you show, uh, I, are those uh, molded or are they hand modeled? Oh, they are handmade, yeah. And some uh, particular thing is that they are made of clay, just clay, nothing else. It, it is not, they, have, they, they don't have tempers, sand or rose or any other materials. Right. That concludes the morning session then.